as we've made visual changes to other elements, you can also make changes to, you guessed it, the transport bar. This is the default look. If you right click here, you can see that I've got the transport bar in the docker. When it is in the docker, you can drag it up and out like this, so you can see more of the display. This is the time selection display. If you right click on this, you can see different things that can be viewed. See, I've changed it here to minutes and seconds, into samples, but I'm going to leave it on the ruler time unit. If you right click here, you'll see that you can also dock the transport in the main window. It jumps back down here. Now it's a part of the main window, and you can't extend it out like you could in the docker. Let me try to explain the difference between the main window and the docker. Right click here and dock the transport. And let's bring up another element in the docker. Let's bring up the mixer. So we've got the mixer and the transport. Right click here again and let's dock the transport in the main window. You'll notice that it sits now above the mixer. This just gives you an explanation of the main window and the docker. The docker resides here below with the mixer and the transport bar is part of the main window with the arrangement and the tracks. But I'm going to put the transport back in the docker and just drag it down. There's also some other positions where you can put the transport. If you right click and go down to docked transport position, here you can see other options you have. Now I've sent the transport to the top of the window. I actually quite like it here at the top, but let's put it back in its default position and dock the transport in the docker. You'll see that there's different view options as well. You'll see you've got different scrolling options during playback, and you can change the record mode. By default, the record mode is set to time selection and auto punch. So let's say I make a selection over here, and I record enable the track, and I record. You'll see it doesn't record anything until it hits the selection, and then punches in right over there, and punches right back out. When you right click on the record button, the same options are there. There are other things you can choose to make visible or hard. Say, for example, you don't want the play rate. Untick that and the play rate's gone. Let's say I want to take out the time signature. Untick that, and that's gone as well. So you can organize the amount of items that are on your transport bar. But let me just put those back. Put the play rate back and the time signature. What I sort of skipped over in the previous tutorial was this play rate. Let me give you a bit of demonstration of this. This is sort of like an old school vinyl player. You'll see that if you play your audio back, when you increase the play rate, it increases the speed. And the same when you slide it down, it slows the audio playback down. And if you double click, it goes back to its default position. I haven't really figured out exactly what I'd use this for. Other than you write a track and then you decide to slow it down and record some vocals over it or something. Or maybe in a live context, where you maybe want to change the tempo speed of a track. It's there and you can choose to use it or not. So that's some basic steps to change the way the transport bar looks and to customize it. In the next tutorial, we'll look at how to incorporate fades into our projects.